We're at Valley Hybrids. I'm here with my friend George. We're twinning, in case you haven't noticed. Twinning hard. George, you can start growing a mustache for me. For rides. Just to let you guys know how much I care about our Project Runway fans mm. and friends and cruiser buddies, I'm not going to put you through the torture of having Ben try to build a transmission. So On yours truly took care of that. That's already handled. So if you find yourself in a situation like Ben did a few months ago where our longtime buddy Dave decided to give him a brilliant idea of going to Rubicon with a stockish <laughs> 40. And then Ben figured out really quick that his gearing wasn't anywhere near low enough because he was just pogo sticking through there. Yeah! It was. And abusing his clutch. <laughs> and my insides. We built an H41. They look identical to an H42, which would be the standard transmission, the standard four speed that came in the cruisers in the US and worldwide uh, starting in 1974. This one looks the same, except it's got a different gear set in it. Lower first gear, uh, <laughs> five to one first gear versus three and a half to one. The factory transfer case is only a 2.28 to one. This transfer case is gonna be a four to one, so it's twice as low. You go up the room counter places like that, you put it in low range, <laughs> Put it in first gear, it lets your foot off the clutch, and you just let the truck work. You never okay. touch the clutch again. And so that's it won't really die what we're trying to do. Does this guy know how to well, party or what? No, Ryan comes in kit form. We keep them in stock. Prod from Advanced Adapters. It comes with a cast iron case. The bolt holes and everything is the same location and the physical dimension. It does hang down a little bit lower right here because it's got bigger gears in it. The gear is bigger diameter, so you get lower gearing. But it will bolt right in. You don't have to do any modifications at all. You get a whole gear set. Oh. You get a bunch of little stuff and a full rebuild kit too. The way to build one is you take your original transfer case out of the truck, you tear it apart, you let a professional tear it apart, not this guy. So I'm Clean it there. all up, prep it, <laughs> and then we use the Orion and some of the components from an old case and build a whole new transfer case. And then he can Hulkamania back in the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Lift with your back, everybody. I cleaned the transfer case up because since Ben just showed up on Sunday afternoon, I took the liberty of cleaning up some other stuff. So I've got a whole set of hardware. We have a top cover that we already drilled and tapped for a breather hose. We have a late model nose cone. We have one of our woo, fancy dual seal speedo housings. These are machines, so there are two seals in here. Two rubbers, you guys. Wrap it up Extra nice and tight. Safe. And the side cover, and then we have hardware, some other stuff. On the four speed transmissions, they have some spacers in there from the factory. They're always beat up. So we, as Cruiser Brothers, actually start making them. Toyota discontinued them a while ago, so this oh. is kind of a Cruiser Brothers exclusive. We had those machined and hardened and surfaced and everything, so we stocked those. We're gonna put a new main shaft in the Orion transfer case and a new slider. This is the number one reason why these transfer cases pop out of gear if your slider is worn out. We're gonna install a new front output flange. That little sexy time. Oh, I nice. like that. That's We're gonna go to a fine spline front output shaft here. Yeah. and a fine spline coupler. That stuff actually came from Kurt at Cruiser Outfitters. Kurt, my man! And you guys are probably going, well, you're at Valley Hybrids, why are you using Kurt's parts? Because it's a one big family. <laughs> exactly. An incestual giant family. <laughs> exactly. Incest. You know, Kurt and I are actually really good friends. We were just at King of the Hammers together last Sunday uh, to pit for Rob Tigard and help him out with his race. And Kurt and I, like I said, we're friends. We help each other out with parts and tech support and everything else. It's, it's a big family. So Kurt caught wind of it down there. It's like, dude, I want to be part of it, so oh, cool. here's some parts for, for the build. So that's what we're doing. The only other thing we're going to do, because we know yep. yeah. <laughs> this person is driving style, we make a reinforcement bracket. Ooh. It's called a nose cone saver. Once the nose cone gets bolted to a case, we slide this guy over it to reinforce it. And then they line up eventually. And that's the nose cone saver. <laughs> so these show up machined, freshly machined, and then paint it from advanced adapters. I always repaint them because there's always a bunch of bare surfaces and then they end up rusting. Oh. So I paint the case, so we gotta clean this up a little bit. You know, I'm a fan of that too, so. You just want to help brake clean. <laughs> the high you get from an inhalant is very temporary and short. Make sure all your doors are closed. That way it's a little bit longer lasting. Obviously nitrous oxide is gonna be your best friend there. Not then you run gold. around with your face with <laughs> yeah. gold paint all you're over. You're gonna wanna have metallic paints, you guys. We're talking silver and gold if you're huffing paint. Find yourself a good brown bag. You're gonna get demonetized. Great lesson for all the kiddos. <laughs> Just saying, don't get out there with red paint. If gold you really wanna see Charlie's Chocolate Factory, you gotta get the gold. 
So we're cleaning the surfaces. And I say we're as in George and I are doing I'm it. just being supervised here. Yeah. This is a role reversal, but that's okay. This is pretty typical though. Well, George, right. George comes to me doing. for pointers all the time, you guys. This is something you probably don't realize, but especially when it comes to transmission assembly and rock crawling. Yeah. Right. Regal kit, right? It's my understanding these are overnight from Japan. George has a pretty girthy five inch shaft here that he just got done. I'm gonna say that's six. You recognize that? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> not on the dresser. <laughs> that's pretty much what Ryan kit unpacked, right? So all new bearings, idler shaft, gasket kit, case itself. Behind door number five, we have a whole new gear set. And a the, sticker. So originally when advanced adapters came out with the Orion, they had it in a three to one or four to one gear set. And they offered an Orion HD. Um, they only built space? 50 of the yeah. Orion okay. HDs. And then they figured out that nobody really wanted a three to one TK, so everybody wanted four to one. So that's all they make now and have been for years. And they've probably sold, I don't know, well over a thousand of them. They used to, they used to serialize these things and stamp serial numbers into them so you could figure out what part of what production run it was, but they stopped that probably, oh man, five or eight years ago. We've probably built close to 300 of these at this point. Input seal mm -hmm. needs to go in this bore. Input, see this edge, rubberized. This part is gonna go in first. Should we put some grease on there or something? Or? I like putting a little bit of silicone on. For me, it's more just force it, but. <laughs> Feels seated. There you go. And All right. Contribute. That's All right. as much as Ben's gonna do. I'm gonna go lay down. Gonna be this guy. Put the rear bearing weights in there now. This is somewhat of a press fit in the rear here. Mm. And when you set the preload on the bearing, this has to be able to push back and forth. So I always put a little bit of oil in here. Poking the glory hole there. There's so much penetration happening. Realistically, this needs to be about a quarter inch down from flush because okay. this step right here is how far it's going to be down. I always like pushing it through a little further. So when the gear set goes in, the gear set pushes against it and then pushes it in place. Okay, that's about all we can do on the transfer case for now. Can I just say I'm having so much fun? That's all we're doing for now? That's it. <laughs> Lunch time. This one is extra ribs for... Pleasure. Right. Yeah. This is a later nose comb. Uh, they, in 77, they started putting these extra ribs on there to beef them up. The early ones didn't have all those ribs. They're a little smoother, not as strong, but since we're pulling on the Ryan, <laughs> and yep. he's and gonna I'm be driving. Thin. I'm gonna be shifting gears. We're gonna be building this as strong as possible. I always put a little bit of oil where the bearings go in to help them slide in place. Pretty sure you're not. Feel seated. Then if you look really close. Sensation Rachel will never experience. There's a little slot right there. Yeah. At the bottom. Like a keyhole. Because it sits in a truck like this, so whatever oil comes up here can go through there, then drains out here and into the main case. Okay. So when you put that piece on, so when I put don't the snap ring on. The... Exactly. I put the opening where the little slot is. <sighs> Elephant. Typically, oh, oh gosh, <laughs> shot, shot number it? two. No, I didn't break it, dude. Well, once it gets bottomed out, will it rotate some? That's a oh, yeah. stabby motion. You notice I put the little pointy bits equidistant from the gap. And you'll notice that Ben put some nice scratches in it too. Yeah. Oh, no. That'll help with the uh, <laughs> oil. When we put this seal in, we put silicone around the outside. Mm. So in case Ben installs it and scratches it, <laughs> it's not There's a really leak. good chance of that happening. This stuff always intimidates me, but it's... It's like a puzzle. It's yeah, play. it's a puzzle where you don't... It's big Legos. It's like a puzzle with no edge pieces. So which way do you think this bearing goes? I'm going to say this way. Nope, I'm going to say up like this. There you go, because otherwise... Cause otherwise you wouldn't be able sorry. to get the... Otherwise you can't get that in there. Prone portion in there. Always use your hands first. Just keep hitting. <laughs> How much more can this take? You'll hear it. Oh, not there. I was going to say, you want to get it stuck. This came from Kurt. Okay. Yes, Kurt. So it goes in the middle. Thanks, big dog. And then you put it on top of. Actually, Advanced Adapters gives you this fancy piece of tubing. Really? Okay. For assembling the trace. It just so happens that it also works on the front output. Big socket. Yeah. Is that a 19? Tap that in there. 
There you go. Spot them down. Yep. And now, okay, kids, who knows what this is? It's a rolling head pinch bar. We used one of these in a previous video a couple years ago oh, when man. we built the knuckles, when we did disc brakes. I had more hair back then. So, no, you didn't. on my 54 millimeter hub socket, yeah. just so happens it's a perfect size to install a pinion seal or transfer to an output seal. So instead of using a hollowed out spray paint can, which is what I was thinking about doing, <laughs> I have After you huff all the paint I, I, did, I did that on uh, the accent seals. I used a... <laughs> yeah, I'm not proud of that. Since my depth perception is complete crap, I have to do it this way. You guys know why, right? <laughs> I was going to ask my surgeon if my blindness could be caused by masturbation, but she was such a nice lady that I couldn't get myself to do it. You're like, so you're like I only have one eye left, but that is literally the risk I'm willing to take. She was, she was way too nice. If she was meaner or if it was a dude, I would have pulled okay, that one. Throw that one down. Nose cone, pretty much done. Turn it around, all the sides. Yeah, this shit looks like it belongs on the space shuttle. It's probably a better quality than what's actually on the space shuttle. Uh, all right. No, it's right. Yeah. All right. This will make it back home. Yeah. Not, oh. too, not too soon, so. <laughs> no, those okay, people so. died a long time ago. It's a good Just joke. so you can see how all this ends up working out. This shaft sticks in the transfer case, right? Mm -hmm. Rear drive shaft goes on here in the e-brake drum. Gear's right here. Yeah. And then this, which might be a pain to get on there the first time. I'll put it in the refrigerator? This came from us. You got the shaft from Valley Hybrids and Cruiser Brothers. Kurt gave me the hole to put the shaft in. It goes like so, right? Teasing. And this guy can spin until That's you actuate that and it slides forward and, and then, then locks in... the two shafts together. Oh, man. And then you're in four-wheel drive. I like to lay my components out for whatever step I'm doing next just to make sure I have everything there and I'm not searching for stuff. And then, you know, I'm 90% done. I go, oh, man, I forgot about that. So we're going to put the idler gear in here, Yeah. which is this guy. Jeez. Requires an idler shaft, a couple bearings, a couple thrust washers, spacer, O-rings, and a retainer. We have to get this new idler shaft in there. Okay. It's got an O-ring on each side. The way it's going to lay out, it's going to have a bearing, spacer, another bearing, Kind of a washer, gonna have a gear, and another washer. But that's all gonna be inside. It's all gonna be inside, and then there's an o ring here and here. And so, the way I do it, you have to move it kind of like. And the issue is, you I don't, don't want to cut I don't the actually see what the <laughs> It's real easy to cut the o rings, and then again, it's gonna leak because somebody might scratch it. Yeah. I took an old idler shaft, okay. ground it down a little bit. I'm gonna use that as a guide on this side. You can use a socket that's just a tiny bit, you know, slight looser fit than this. There's lots of different ways of doing it. Okay. I like doing it this way. I bring that guy in just a tiny bit, just like that, right? because this washer needs to be in there. One on each side. If you look in here, you can see a little slot right there. There's flanges on the edge And you of that can washer. see the surface, and there's a slot over on that side. Okay. And the washer has this little tab. So once it's on the shaft inside the case, it goes against the sidewall of the case, and then that slot keeps it from twisting. You don't want this washer to twist. Okay. It's supposed to be stationary. It's got these little dimples for oil. Those are oiling holes. So there's always a layer of oil in here, and then the gear kind of spins on the washer and the shaft. Then I put a little tiny bit of grease on here to kind of hold it in place. There we go. <laughs> and that's it. Nice. And by having that little bit of grease on there, it'll hold that on so we can drop the gear in there. Some people like putting the O-rings on then sliding the whole thing through. That's if you do that, then when it hits this, these three edges right here, it'll cut the O-ring. Always carry a Sharpie. Okay. Right, I have, one, my, I have one in my pocket too. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so. I don't, that's my penis. This little tab is gonna go on the outside of the case right here, and like that. Hold that piece in place. And that's what's gonna hold this shaft in place and keep it from spinning and falling out. I put the tab on there. And then I mark it so I know where that hole needs to line up. We can put one of the O-rings on, and it's going to be the one that's the furthest away. It's going to go in last. I never roll my O-rings on because then they twist, and they're more Bound likely up. to get cut. So I pull on and then snap them in place, and then I just kind of push them around. 
So in case they're twisted, they get untwisted. Yeah. These are supposed to be pretty tight, so before you get too far, line up the mark with your hole. All right? Close enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That all works. Well, see, all I can do is like imagine a pair of balls right here. A lot of times when I build these in summertime, I leave, I typically have two or three of these idler shafts in the freezer. Because oh, wow. they shrink up a couple of thousands and they're much easier to get in there. You shouldn't have to smash it in there. And then once it's in there a little bit, like that. Start with the washer. We're gonna put the other washer in. Yeah, here. Let's see what you can do there, Daddy. There's two edges though where a nodule could go, George. Doesn't matter which one. Okay, I'm gonna choose the. You get to pick and choose which uh -huh. flavor you want. Okay, she's in place. If you have How the much? idler shaft or the, the socket in too far, then the gear won't drop down in there. So you gotta have it just right. Mm -hmm. Idler gear, if you look close, sumo gear. Right? Okay. So, same guy that supplied the knuckle kit we used for years, same guy we get the transmission rebuild kit from, the shafts, these flanges, all that kind of stuff. Obviously a nod, all that comes from a sumo. nod to Japan. Sumo. All of it, 100% Japanese. Heavy duty Japanese people are sumo wrestlers. That's why they call them that. Man, I thought that thing was going for a ride. <laughs> <Do you laughs> <wish> there? <laughs> So this gear is goes a... in like that because the drive gear yeah. comes in on this side. It's got to hit this gear. If you go backwards, it won't hit the drive gonna be gear. Very neutral. I drop that down in there. It's a little tricky. Sometimes the washer. Oh, the bearings fall are off. in there already. Yeah, I put the bearings in there. Yeah. Okay. There she goes. I'm good. There we go. Okay. Most of our way in. Look down in there and make sure the bearings aren't sticking out on the side. Nope, we're good. Good. There we go. All right, so both okay. shafts are in there. We got them started. Fought a little bit again, because it's so cold. The case shrinks down a little bit, so it's extra snug on the shaft. It was in but, the pool. See, that's spinning pretty well, so we're good. If you look really close to you, you can see some brown stuff on this gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like Cosmoline grease? It's like Cosmoline. It's just to preserve it. As soon as you put oil in there, start driving it, that'll melt melt away in the, and dissolve in the oil. It doesn't hurt anything. But Same thing they coat AK-47s or SKSs with. Exactly. Just to, the other one just worked its way out. Ultimately, we'll push that one out of here, but... But we need O-ring on that other side, yep. too, yeah? We have an O-ring. Once you get close to having that O-ring in, you double-check your alignment, make sure your pin's gonna line up, and then I put some silicone on that O-ring so to help it slide in place. He's into the... And in case there's a little gouge or we cut the O-ring or whatever, it'll seal it. It's insurance line, policy. Second line of defense. Exactly. All right, you're and at then, the O-ring. See, the shaft's gonna come out on this side, but we need to get that O-ring on there. So you gotta go out so, a little further than normal? Yep. Now we can see the O-ring group. Do you do the same grease on the opposite side? Or yep. the, okay, Silicone. Cool. All right, cool. A little further, wipe off the excess silicone. A if we're off a tiny bit, we're though. good. That's oh nice. yeah, it's. it's that's one of the one of the, of the complaints I've really heard of the Orion is the the potential for leaking. If you've got workarounds or things that you've done to prevent that, like that's good intel. Mine don't leak. So that's because he double bags it. This stuff you might have seen us use before. Gasket maker. Okay. Primatex Formula Five Eighteen. It's an anaerobic sealer. It's kind of like Loctite, but more toothpaste consistency. That acts as a seal and a thread locker. And I put it on all my bolts. So it seals the threads and acts as a Loctite. Yeah, See how that pushed cool the shaft down? Yeah, I mean, I just, <laughs> just to make sure it's down. Tighten that up. That's torque. And you're good. good and tight, and then That's we're right. ready to rock. Got yeah. a little crooked, but it doesn't really matter here. Well, let's that up and straighten it. What's the Oh, the tab? The tab went <laughs> sideways a little bit. There we go. I put Loctite on this because if that falls out and the retainer's gone, then that shaft will slowly work its way out of there. And, and it's then game over. it's going to leak all the oil out, and then the gears are going to get misaligned, and pow! Now, the first thing you got to do is make sure this gear still spins nice. Woo! Look at that. So the bearings aren't bound up. They're yep. all moving free in there, and the gear And now, spins. there's a little oil, oiling hole right there. Yeah. 
Now I put some oil on the bearings. You don't want to do that first because then it gets on the the O-rings and everything, and, and then it might not seal. seal. So Damn, oil now. So many nuggets of wisdom. Yeah, little bits that you just don't think about. Or I just don't think about. Beautiful. Smooth. That realistically is one of the two most challenging parts of building an Orion. So if you can do that, you can, can rebuild can an engine. That. Ooh, don't try it. No, no, I'll wait. We've seen what you do with engines. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh! And set the case aside. Okay. okay. And next thing we're going to do is work on the gear set. All right. Gear set.